In HTML, various elements have attributes that contain links to other resources. For example, the href attribute of an anchor element, the source attribute of an image element, and so on. The values of these attributes are URLs and can be absolute or relative. An absolute URL includes the website address. This anchor tag, for example, contains a link that includes the protocol and domain or host name, making this an absolute URL. Absolute URLs are generally used to link to resources on other sites. For example, you might want to insert a link to another site from your own, or include a style sheet from a CDN, and so on. You can, of course, also use absolute URLs to refer to resources within the same site. This can be useful if you want to move your content around and not break a style sheet link, for example, and is also useful to deter bots from copying your content. It also used to be the case that absolute URLs were better for SEO, but according to Google at least, that's no longer the case. Also, unless you're generating the links dynamically, using absolute URLs means it is more difficult to move your site to a new server, as you'll have to change all the URLs that refer to the old server address. Relative URLs, on the other hand, don't contain the full web address. Relative URLs are generally used to link to resources within the same website. There are several types of relative URL. If the file you're linking to is in the same folder as your HTML document, then you can just put the name of the file. This is known as a path relative URL. If it's in a subfolder, then you can just include the subfolder before the file name. These are relative to the current file. The problem with path relative URLs is they can easily be broken. Let's look at an example. Here we have a PHP script, index.php, that just contains a simple title and a message. In here we're including a header file, and this just contains some HTML. In the head section, we have a link tag with a reference to a style sheet in the CSS folder. This just contains some simple CSS that changes the background color of the document to blue. Also in the header, we have a navigation section with links to the index page and also another index page in an admin subfolder in this page, all we're doing is including the header, as with the other page, followed by another message and another title. In the browser, the index.php page looks like this. We know the style sheet has been included correctly as the background has been changed to blue. The home link works, and so does the link to the page in the subfolder. However, when we load this page, the background colour reverts to the default white, so it looks like the style sheet isn't loading correctly. If we view the page source, we can see the style sheet link is relative to the current path. As this is a file in the admin folder, the browser is requesting this path inside the admin folder, not in the root, so it doesn't find it. What's more, if I click on the link to the admin page, which previously worked, we get a 404 error. The actual page that was requested is admin slash admin slash index.php. It's relative to the path of the page we were on. This problem can be fixed by using root relative URLs. A root relative URL starts with a slash. These are always relative to the root of the site. For example, this anchor tag contains a URL that points to the page2.php file in the root of the site. This image tag source is the file picture.png in the images folder, which is also in the root of the site. 
Root relative URLs are particularly useful when moving code between servers, for example, when putting your site live. Let's look at an example. Here we have the code we just saw that contains path relative URLs for both the stylesheet link and the navigation. Let's change these to root relative URLs by prefixing them with a slash. In a browser, the index page still loads the stylesheet correctly as the background is blue. In the admin page, it now works here too. The stylesheet is being loaded from a URL that's relative to the root of the site, not to the current path. And the navigation links also now work correctly. Finally, there are also protocol relative URLs where the host name is included, but the protocol isn't. These URLs start with a double slash. The browser will use whatever protocol is used by the page that contains the link. For example, if the site is using HTTP, then this is the protocol that will be used to request these resources. If it's using HTTPS, then the requested URLs will use HTTPS. This technique was used to avoid a warning in the browser if you were mixing non-secure with secure content. Nowadays, however, HTTPS is becoming the norm, so it's not really necessary anymore. And protocol relative URLs like this can be vulnerable to hacking, are slower than absolute URLs, and may not load if you're using HTTP2. So they're best avoided. So from a developer's point of view, using root relative URLs is the easiest and simplest thing to do, as it allows you to move your content from one server to another more easily without breaking anything.